Good morning, everyone. And happy Sunday to you. We, uh, wow, we had what, what an incredible weekend we had with our men. Uh, Friday night and all day Saturday, our guest Phil here with us. And uh, just an amazing time of learning, growing, uh, sharing, being in the presence of the Lord, worshiping together. I think we had somewhere in the neighborhood of about 120 men here. Um, just an incredible time. And so we're just excited to be back in the Lord's house once again. And so I invite you to stand as we go before our God and to sing. Let's open with the word of prayer. Lord, we, uh, you've put breath in our lungs this morning, and we intend to use it. Lord, uh, as we take this moment to stand in your house and to maybe look at this cross that's behind me and in front of all the rest of us to say, that's where my Lord went. My Lord chose the nails for his glory's sake, but also for my sake. I can live today because of what that cross stood for and meant. I can stand today because Jesus did not stay on that cross. He was buried, yes, but he rose again. We live in, in light of the resurrection and in light of his victory. We stand and we can sing for joy today because of all you've done. So may that be our heart's cry, that we could sing to you in praise and worship and adoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing to him. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. Change. 
feet on solid ground. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. Heal my heart. You change my name. Forever free. I am not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. Amen. Turn to someone and tell them, thank God he has saved you and me this morning. these words together. The truth of Scripture. In the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle
we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus in the name of God you to say thank you 
to declare, God, that you have turned us around. You are the king of kings. It's you who appoint leaders and authorities all over this world. And God, we choose to submit our lives to live under your kingship as the king of kings. We choose, Lord, to live our lives built on the rock the rock of Jesus Christ. Lord, be with us today as we continue to sing your praise, as we hear your word proclaimed over us, as we celebrate now this table of the Lord's Supper. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. One of my favorite miracles of Jesus was the feeding of the 5,000. Sitting 5,000 people, it was Passover time, so there were massive crowds all over the place. And about 5,000 men came to follow Jesus, and they're up on the hillside, and while all the festivities were happening down the hill, here Jesus is with a simple meal that a young boy brings to him, a couple of fish and some loaves of bread. It said that the, the bread was barley loaves. It was, it was simple bread, fit for beasts. The fish were said to be maybe peckled fish, very insignificant. And sometimes we look at the gifts of God as maybe insignificant, and it may even find it insulting, depending on your place of life. And yet God used such simple things to feed 5,000 men. When he left, he went in a boat. Scripture tells us of another miracle. He calmed the seas, eased the disciples' fears, And when he got to the other side, people started looking for him again. And he challenged them because what they were looking for wasn't faith, it was more miracles. And there's something that Jesus said in John chapter 6 to them. He said, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Get that, the bread of God. He, Jesus, is our bread of heaven. And they said to him, sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Do you believe this? When Jesus was at that table with his disciples that that final time, I wonder if they had this in mind. Looking back a year or so two years or so later, when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and then he would take bread like this, break it in front of them and say, this is my body given to you. What a confusing moment that must have been. But I think Jesus, as the teacher that he is, he used something like this to show yet another truth. Just as manna came from God and it fed the Israelites, so the manna from heaven, Christ our Savior, would come and would feed us. Not only eternally, but each time we come together in a setting like this and we partake together in the Lord's table, we are reconnected again. We're reminded, we're fed, reminded of something that is eternally within us. But at that night when he took this bread, he showed it to their disciples, and maybe it looks something like this. It's a piece of matzah. It's flat from its baking because at that particular festival, it was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It was not to have leaven in it. It was seen as a symbol of sin. And so when he took something flat like this and gave it to his disciples, he says, take a look at this. This is my body. I'm sinless before you. And if we were to hold it to light, it's striped from its baking and it has pierced holes through it. This is my body. By his stripes we are healed, and he was pierced for our transgressions. This is my body. It's broken for you. He's going to lay his life down for you. He says, take this and eat. Just as they shared just a couple of fish and pieces of bread amongst 5,000, now they would share a meal together amongst the 12 of them. Take and eat. Be filled. Be satisfied. And he asks for you and I to do the same here, is to take that piece of bread, to taste, to remember, to feed on the love of Jesus and be satisfied in him. He also gave to them to share a drink, a cup. 
He held it to them, blessed it, gave it to them, and saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. I kind of wonder which is more shocking to hear, this is my body broken, or this is the new cup of my blood. But he was essentially saying, I am the Lamb of God. I'll be spilled tomorrow for you. Just as for hundreds of years, we would take animals to the temple to sacrifice as an offering of atonement, a temporary solution to a permanent problem. Jesus is saying, we have a new covenant. There's a new gift. It's the blood of my sacrifice given to you. You now take this and drink. Remember my promise to you. That my blood, just as the blood of the lamb covered the doorpost of the Israelites and it saved them from death, now the blood of the Savior, the Lamb of God, covers the doorpost of your heart and my heart to save us from death. To save us from a destruction that we know we deserve. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to the grace of God. He suffered in our place. It is finished. Heavenly Father, we... Pray for these gifts of body and blood. May they be for us this day, the body and blood of our Lord. May we be filled, nourished, and satisfied as we take part together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take a moment. Feed on him. Take that bread. Take that juice. Have a few moments of silent prayer. God bless. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your faithfulness, your justice. Lord, you have made us right with you through your Son. And we love you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, church. Good morning. If you're online with us, good morning. We have some folks that uh, it's real difficult for them to get out of their homes and being online is a blessing. So let's give a shout out to those people. Woo, hey. (laughs) God is so good. I don't know about you, but it gives me so much uh, encouragement each time we come here together as a large group. And, um, you know, God is just so good. And all the time, all the time. Hey, um, I want to give you a warm welcome. If this is your first time here at Mount Zion Church, just want to say welcome to you. Glad you're with us. I'd love to be able to meet you. My name's Andy, and there's others that would uh, love to be able to meet you after the service. We'll be in the lobby. And uh, there's a whole lot going on in that bulletin as you received that when you came in. And there's a lot of opportunities to get plugged in, to Uh, serve, to grow in the faith. There's a place to write down your name and contact information. So if you are new, would you be so bold to write down your information there? And we have three offering containers there. Uh, Just put it in there. We'd love to reach out to you. And then also there's a portion on there to write down prayer requests. So we have a team that prays specifically for those prayer requests that are written on the the tear-off portion. And they pray every Wednesday And so if you have a prayer request, be sure to put that, um, write that on there and then put it in the offering and we'll be praying with you and for you. So um, we are, this is the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. Today is the International Day of Prayer. So congregations all over the world are praying and so Sometimes we don't think about it that much because, you know, we live 
in this nation where we have so much freedom. But there is a phrase called the 1040 window. And so there are some missionaries that coined this phrase years ago. And so the 1040 is having to do with latitude and longitude lines. And so across North Africa, the Middle East, into Asia, there are 68 countries where it's very, very difficult to be a Christian. Many laws on the books that even forbid it. And so if we consider that 68 countries out of the 8 billion people that live in this world, about 5 billion are in that 1040 window. So consider that. that Now, granted, there are varying degrees of persecution and laws on the books, but you know, something to consider is that um, we have many in the body of Christ, that are our brothers and sisters that have to hide to do something like this, that when they're doing Bible study, they can't just kind of sit there in their living room. If they want to follow Jesus, their family might disown them. And so today, we are going to join together to pray for those um, in the persecuted church. And, you know, something that I love about Mount, well, I love a lot of things about Mount Zion Church, but one thing that I really love about this church is that um, we get out of our comfort zone. We have uh, missionaries that we support. We have a mission board that meets every month. Um, we have, you know, there were, when you came in, you maybe saw those cookbooks out there in the lobby. This is um, a fundraiser. Get your cookbook. This is supporting missionaries. Many of them are in that 1040 window. And so let's join our hearts together to pray right now. You know, maybe, and this might be a little uncomfortable for you, but maybe, um, Maybe not, but maybe we could join hands. Maybe we could join hands and say, uh, let's lift up our brothers and sisters um, that have to hide, that um, don't get the freedoms that we enjoy here. And let's join our hearts and pray for them right now. Father God, we are joining together, Lord. Um, as we join hand in hand right now, we join with our uh, brothers and sisters all across this land here as we pray for the persecuted church. Lord, we join in asking you, Lord, to do only what you can do. We know in your word there's so much about a spiritual warfare and, and about um, that the enemy has just deceived and told so many lies and so many have fallen susceptible to those lies. Whole tribes, whole nations, whole countries have been deceived. And so, Lord, we are praying right now. We're praying right now for these brothers and sisters, Lord. God, that you would meet them in their dreams. Lord, that you would gain ground in their lands. Lord God, I pray that our hearts here in this land where we have so much freedom, Lord, would be looking for ways to bless these brothers and sisters, Lord, that we would be mindful, we would be in prayer for these believers, our brothers, our sisters, Lord. God, we thank you that our hope is in you. Lord, we do not need to be discouraged. Lord, our hope is in you. You, Lord, so many times in your word, we hear the disciples asking about things that are impossible, but with you, God, all things are possible. So God, I pray the efforts that we make here, just this little congregation, Mount Zion Church, the efforts we make here, Lord, Lord, you would just um, grow these bodies of, of, of believers in these persecuted lands. Lord, you would touch their hearts. You would let them know, Lord, that we are praying, that we are, we are 
uh, putting forth effort, uh, finances, Lord. We are wanting to bless them, Lord, because, Lord, you've blessed us so much, and we want them, Lord, to, to just know that you are right with them in their pain and their suffering, Lord. God, we thank you so much that this is not all that there is here on this earth, Lord. This is just chapter one. And Father God, you have conquered the grave as we just celebrated. Lord, you have conquered the grave. You have conquered evil. Lord, we praise you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen Amen and amen. Um, Hey, so... um, Next week, we, I forgot to get them here, but we have these prayer cards uh, so you can know how to pray for the persecuted church. But there's a lot of organizations out there. Check out Voice of the Martyrs, and there's other, other um, websites that have a lot of information about how we can be praying for these brothers and sisters. Hey, so I would like to um, invite the ladies to a women's conference. The men just had an awesome conference here this past weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. But uh, the ladies, you are invited. It's coming up very soon, uh, November 11th. So there are um, brochures out there in the lobby, and you can sign up online as well. So ladies, make sure you come to that. Just an awesome time in the Lord. Let's see, I would like to invite Dynamic Duo, Kara Main, Harley Main. You're both going to be giving announcements, so you might, both might as well come up at the same time. <laughs> Let's hear it for the Mains. As you know, we have a um, connection that we've had for many years with a community down in Warncliffe, West Virginia, and Kara is here to share with us about that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Kara Main, and um, I um, wanted to introduce you to our MZ to WV ministry. This is our Facebook page. If you'd like to find us and follow along, um, that's Juliet Lloyd. She used to come here to Mount Zion, and now Bloom, Juliet Bloom, and she lives in West Virginia now, and that other girl is Brittany Gibson. She's one of our uh, volunteers down in Mingo County that works with us. So um, anyways, I'm currently from Southern West Virginia, and um, MZ to WV is one of those ministries that um, I presented to Pastor Craig about 19 years ago, and he said, yes, go for it. Um, So um, MZ to WV is a ministry that partners with the Warncliffe community, which is in Southern West Virginia, um, which is uh, in Mingo County, West Virginia. It once was a pretty much bustling coal mining town deep in the mountains, and the people there struggle with uh, unemployment, food insecurity, trauma, addiction, and um, generational curses, which is pretty much the same stuff we deal with here, but they have less resources than we do to deal with them. Um, Mount Zion supports this community in many ways. Like I said, this is our 19th year of partnership, and um, we have an annual vacation Bible school there, and we have about 112 children that we work with regularly in that community, Um, and we supply food through our emergency food pantry to about 106 households, and that's called uh, our Blessing Barn. And we have volunteers down in Warncliffe that helped make all this possible for us. Um, The Blessing Barn that I mentioned before is uh, pretty much a big shed that was purchased by our congregation through donations about uh, a year ago, last fall, and um, it was previously run out of the basement of one of our volunteers, and we served about 20 to 30 families, but now uh, Mount Zion's supporting 106 families in the area, and we're still growing. Um, Every month, our volunteers, they pick up food, and they organize blessing boxes for those 106 families, and then in between those blessing boxes, whatever we have left in the blessing barn, um, school supplies, clothes, personal care items, we try to meet the needs that come up in between. 
Um, you can go to the next slide. We have some upcoming events. Uh, we have a Christmas card drive going on right now. I think there's about 20 kids left to sponsor. Um, we're doing a $25 Walmart gift card inside of a Christmas card for each child. And um, we have a sign up genius link on our Facebook page and on the church email if you're interested in signing up for that. Um, we're working on a spring fundraiser. And uh, then every spring we also do a back to school drive. And we take those back to school supplies down with us to the vacation Bible school that we hold every summer and give those out at the end of the vacation Bible school. And we have some prayer requests. Um, that in the top picture is Janet. She is our main volunteer that runs our Blessing Barn. And that's a couple of the girls in the community that she homeschools. And then, of course, there's Harley and one of our kids, Tucker. Um, we've been working with these kids for so long. We know them. Our volunteers from Mount Zion know them and keep in touch with them year-round. Um, but uh, if we can just keep them in our prayers, our main prayer is that the Warncliffe community knows that God hasn't forgotten about them and that, they use, that God uses us to be his hands and feet and to show them that. Um, also that we raise more volunteers in Warncliffe to help Janet because it's quite an undertaking and she's spread thin. Um, she does a lot in the community. Um, also that the children will seek Jesus, have peace, feel loved, have full tummies, and war uh, have a warm and safe place to call home. And um, as I mentioned before, our team here at Mount Zion, just pray for them as they continue to keep these relationships going because that's just really important year-round to keep contact and know the new prayer requests that come up down there and that we can continue to pray. Um, I also wanted to share our Mount Zion uh, MZ to WV Life First. It's Isaiah 58, 7 through 9. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide, provide the poor wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry out for help and he will say, here am I. Um, I just wanted to thank Mount Zion again for all the ways that you support this ministry over the past 19 years. And um, you've planted so many seeds in the hearts of this community. And um, just thank you all for constantly praying and supporting this ministry. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me, email, text, Facebook message. Um, and that's it. Thank you, guys. Okay. All right, good morning. That's my girl. That's my girl. I am I'm a lucky, lucky man. So Kara takes notes uh, to keep the anxiety low and to stay on track, and I take notes so that this doesn't turn into a 27-minute uh, conversation. You give a guy like me a mic and it's going down. Nobody knows where we're going. All right. So my name is Harley Main. Um, I currently have the privilege of serving this church in the capacity of chairperson for our senior pastor search team. And so I'm here to provide an update and to give sort of cast a vision, a direction of where we are and where we're going and ask for you to join us in the prayers that we are currently praying. So I represent a team of eight who are on this committee. We have been um, a very, very dedicated, um, we are seeking God's face, God's direction in all that we do. This, of course, is our first Sunday uh, without Pastor Craig here, um, and we do wish him a, a well in retirement, of course, but we are left here um, to fill this position. And so two things that I want to focus on this morning um, we are, I do want you to know that as a committee, Pastor Craig is still a part of our team. He's uh, taken on more of a consultant role. He's still with us. We are, are in contact with him regularly through this. And I want you to know that we are currently and actively interviewing candidates. That is happening in real time now. So your prayers are very needed and very necessary through this. Um, and you can grab any member of uh, the, the team who you've met previously, and we'd be happy to share uh, specifics and, and what we can share that's appropriate. Two things I want to focus on right now for this week is God can and God is. So I wonder if you can repeat those with me. God can, God can. 
and God is. And we know that at Mount Zion Church, don't we? God can and God is. We know that through and through. We have been taught that. We have learned that from our dear pastor. And we know that that is still the truth. So I think we're all a little bit surprised because of the way Mount Zion has always been blessed that we didn't have this early and smooth transition to our next senior pastor. I think that's, that's surprising to many of us. When I, when I uh, said yes to taking on this role, I thought, my goodness, here at Mount Zion Church, this will be easy. I'm in. I'm in. Boy, oh boy, like most things, if I knew not then what I knew now, I'd still do it. All right. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, so that would have been an awesome plan. We know that that would have been a plan that we wanted. But if we remember that God can and God is, so God could have, God chose not to. Amen? Amen. We have to believe that God chose not to allow that transition to happen previously. He is allowing this time. But sometimes we confuse a time of waiting. Let me just see to make sure that I'm where I want to be. In, well, no, I want to get this right. I want to get this right. Sometimes we confuse waiting with uncertainty. Amen. And I wanted to use that word specifically. Sometimes we confuse waiting with uncertainty. And can we be strong in our truth that there is no uncertainty in God? And there is no uncertainty in what God is doing in Mount Zion. We may not know exactly what the outcome is going to be, but we can rest assured that God is working through us. So here are our two areas of focus this week. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to just do a really quick two-minute video for just a couple of weeks to get us focused on what we are to be doing in this time of waiting because it is not passive waiting. Number one for this week, let's pray in faith, shall we? Let's join our hearts. Let's have faith that God hears our prayers. We're going to pray for the blessings during this season. We're going to pray for Mount Zion to thrive. Pray for, the, pray for those bringing the word. We have a beautiful team, a wonderful team who's going to be bringing the word. And we're going to pray for our next pastor because this person is out there. This person is on their way here. Amen. So we are praying for our next pastor. Number two, we're going to trust in the sovereignty of God. Amen. We, we know that God can, he could have, he chose not to, and this is a blessing. So we're going to pray that God's timing, although may not have aligned with ours, that his timing is perfect in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. We're going to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. We're not going to lean on our own understanding. In all of our ways, we are going to submit to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Harley. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for um, our brother's report. We thank you so much for... Our sisters report, Lord, we thank you for so much uh, as we consider all that you're doing in our lives, Lord. Um, through this body, we thank you, Lord. All glory goes to you. God, as we go to your word now, we thank you for our brother, uh, Phil, that has brought the word to the men this whole weekend. We thank you for him uh, being faithful. We thank you for his life, for his family. God, we just pray you would speak your uh, truth to us through him. God, that uh, Holy Spirit, you would be our teacher as we go to your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I'd like to introduce uh, Phil Lewis to you. Phil has been with us uh, this weekend, and what an, man, for the men that were here, wasn't this just an awesome time we had? Yeah. So we're so blessed to have you, Phil. Thanks. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's good to be here with you guys. Uh, what you may or may not know about me, you probably don't know because you don't know me at all. Uh, I'm a person who always enjoys learning something, and, I, and, I, and it's been very helpful because I'm, I'm not super smart. So it's, it's, it's important to kind of get in touch with some things that will make me a better husband, a better dad, a better leader, all that kind of stuff. So I'm always looking for the, the next thing to learn about. In fact, I was in a bookstore the other day, and, and I saw this book, and it said, How to Fix 50% of Your Problems. So I bought two. 
right? So that, that's just the kind of guy that I am. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking to be a, a better person, right? And I'm looking to help other people. And I, I just want you to know something. If, you're, if your father or your husband or your son uh, came to the men's retreat on Friday or Saturday, I, I just want you to know, I just want you to know, families, I got some really good news for you. The fellas are fixed, <laughs> All right, I got them. I got them. They're they're gonna love you better. They're gonna lead you better. Okay, and guess what? Guess what? Here's the good news. They're going to listen to you better. Right? <laughs> well, it's so good to be with you. I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit so I can see it a little bit easier. And and I I am. I'm very grateful to be here uh, with you. I, I've decided to just really listening to the Lord and saying, God, what what do you want me to say today? Uh, what what is it that would be really helpful to the people of Mount Zion? And and I will tell you this. Uh, Steve did let me know that this was the that that Craig's last Sunday was was last Sunday, and that I would be the first speaker kind of following him, and he gave me some words of encouragement. He basically just said, don't screw it up. And, and so I'm going I'm, <laughs> I'm to do my best to do that. So I've been praying, God, what do you want me to say? What is it that these people need to hear? What, what is it that would encourage them and challenge them and help them through this, this time of, of transition? And I mean, there's a lot of scripture verses to choose from. I don't know if you've counted them. I didn't. I asked Google to count them for me. But there's 31,102 verses in the Bible. There's a lot of verses to choose from. And so what would be something that we could talk about that would really be something that would benefit you and help you during this time? And so I, I, I discovered that there is one particular verse that is really the most viral verse of all time. In fact, if you use you version, this verse has been searched, saved, and shared more than any others. And, and maybe right away you start thinking like I did, well, I, I think I have an idea. I, I'm, I, I've got a good clue as to what this verse is. And it's probably John 3, 16. I mean, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, no, 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 it's not John 3, 16. Well, maybe it's Jeremiah 29, 11. I have that on a coffee mug at home, right? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to pray. No, it's not that. Or, or maybe, like I told the guys yesterday, maybe it's the Song of Solomon. I'll just wait. If you don't know what I'm talking about, read that this afternoon. You'll understand. <laughs> but it's not. it's not. It's not any of those. In fact, in fact, what it is is it's Joshua 1.9. Everybody say Joshua 1.9. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's what Harley was talking about. Wherever Mount Zion goes, wherever Craig goes, wherever you go as family, individuals, God has promised to be with us. And whatever you're experiencing, whatever is going on in your life, maybe, maybe for you, 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 you are struggling with some things and, 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 and maybe you'd say, I'm going through some tough times and, and I kind of I know why. I kind of know why this verse, because, because in a tough chapter of your marriage, you need to know that God is for you. You need to not be discouraged and not be afraid. He's, it, it, maybe, maybe it's a high-octane years of child-rearing. Maybe you just got laid off. Uh, maybe you're fighting an illness or a disease, or maybe you're facing a tough decision, or, or, or starting a new job or school, or, or going through a breakup, or, or maybe, maybe you're involved in a wonderful church that God has blessed for a long, long time by using an incredible leader, and now you're in a time of transition, and you're wondering, is it going to be okay? And I just want to remind you through God's word. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. God is in control. So be strong and be courageous. That's really the message for this morning. And I want to speak to you today and just take a look at this passage. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 1 through 9 and kind of land on that last verse. And I will tell you that I've been a part of lots of men's conferences and retreats and churches and stuff like that. I saw more Bibles yesterday than I've seen in a long, long time on the tables with men. I saw men writing and leaning in and learning and wanting what God wants in their lives. I don't have any doubt that Mount Zion is going to be okay. It's going to be more than okay. God is going to do some amazing things here because people are headed already in the right direction. Craig has done an amazing job of building a wonderful church. And man, I hope you're excited, excited about this next season, this next chapter for what God is going to do. So after the death of Moses, in fact, let's do this. Why don't you stand together with me as we read God's word? We don't always get an opportunity to do this. And you'll notice too, the slides that I use that have a different color. That's because 
this color represents God's word, and his word is always more important than my word, always more important than whoever is standing up here. So I want us just to be aware of that. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, who is Moses' aide, Moses, my servant, is dead. Everybody say dead. Now, what he meant by that is Moses, my servant, is done, okay? That, that's how we know. That's our clue. When you're dead, you're done. If you're not dead, God's not done. Okay, so, so keep that in mind. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land. Big transition. I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river of the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Don't turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and then you will be successful. Have I not commanded you? Here's the verse. Here, have I not commanded you? Be strong, courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. For the Lord God will be with you wherever you go. God, help us today. Help me today. Encourage us, lead us, remind us of your power, your provision, your promises to never leave us, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're facing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. If we were to summarize, if we were going to summarize what this verse means, maybe even this whole passage means, it's basically God talking to Joshua and saying, Joshua, you, you've got a lot. There's, there, there, there's a calling on your life. There's stuff that I want you involved in. There, there's things that you're going through right now, and I just want you to know you, you got this. You got this. And, and whatever it is on that list, whatever it is, I want to say to you, whatever it is, you got this, okay, but that's not the end of it. That's not the end of the, what, what this, this passage represents. You got this because I got you. You got this. You can handle, you can make it. You can be successful. You can prosper in times that seem crazy. You can do this because I've got you. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And we know that's true as we read through the book of Joshua, right? The book of Joshua, his story, where he started out, where God called him. We, we, we get to the end of it, and, and, and we know that Joshua made it. We know that Joshua did truly get it. Because the, the, the Bible says at the end, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. He got all the Israelites together and said, hey, guys, it's time to kind of renew this covenant. I don't know about you, but this is what I am going to do. And as we read on, we find as he gets close to his death, after these things, Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord. Everybody say servant. The servant of the Lord died at the age of 110. He was called the servant of the Lord at the end of his life. But at the beginning, he was just Moses' aide. So at some point, he, 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 he was able to get what God wanted to get to him and be changed and be transformed into the servant that God needed him to be, and he, he got it. So there's hope for us. That's, that's, why, we're looking at, that's why we're looking at his life. In, in other words, we're looking at Joshua's legacy lessons. We spent the weekend talking about the laws of legacy for guys and the laws of legacy for life. And I just want to take a little piece out of some of the things that we shared yesterday and, and on Friday and, and, and present that to you today. But really the idea is what can we learn, what can we learn from Joshua? And because it's much easier to do something when someone shows us how it's done. There, there, there's just no doubt about that at all. People need your example more than they need your sacrifice. They need to see you do what needs to be done. They need to see you live the way God wants you to live, and then it will be much easier for them to follow. That's what a legacy is really all about. People do what, what people see. So we look at this passage of Scripture in verse 6. It says, be strong and courageous. Everybody say strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous because you're going to lead these people. So what exactly does that mean? The idea is that courage is found in companionship with something bigger than ourselves and Bigger than our situation. God is bigger than this transition that Mount Zion is going through. I just want to remind you of that. And, and courage is found when we connect with God. And God is bigger than anything in your life. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how dark 
It doesn't matter how desperate. It doesn't matter how discouraging it is. God is bigger than all that stuff. I, I, I don't know the name of the song. All I can remember are these lyrics that say you can take the biggest thing that's got you down and stand it next to God, and then you'll see who's bigger. That's the truth. No matter what you're going through, you put it next to God, pales in comparison. Not even close. God is always bigger than anything and greater than anything. And the Bible goes on and says, you need to be strong and courageous. Why do I need to be strong and courageous? You need to be strong and courageous because you're going to lead. You're going to lead. And and that's an important thing. So if you're taking notes, if you want to jot down some things, the first thing that I want to encourage you about, to tell you about, talk about, is is that you are going to lead people. And, and, and right away, there's a little pushback because people say, well, I'm, I'm not a leader. Yes, you are. Leadership is just influence. And in fact, the, the, the most introverted person in the world will influence up to 10,000 people in their lifetime. <laughs> that, that's crazy to think about. But it's true. You have people in your life that you are responsible to lead. Now, these, um, uh, you can be a great leader without being just like all the other great leaders. What do I mean by that? Well, well, here's, here's what's interesting. God picked Joshua to follow Moses. Moses was a shepherd. Joshua was a soldier. Moses considered their complaints. You remember the, the story that people would come to Moses and say, well, we're going through this problem, we're struggling with this, and we're going through that, and we don't like this. And Moses would go, oh, man, uh, yeah, well, maybe I can help you with that. They came to Joshua, and Joshua said, suck it up, buttercup. He confronted their laziness and confronted their fear. Why are you afraid? God is with us. He's for us. He didn't put up with that. Totally different. Uh Uh-oh. One second. Just talk among yourselves. (laughs) Hey, I do want to say, especially for the guys that were that that are here today that were there on on Friday and Saturday, I um I want to thank you especially for praying for my wife. I, I was telling them that last Friday my wife came home and she said, I'm feeling I'm feeling a little a little weird. And I said, Well, you are a little weird. She said, no, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling a little sick. And I said, uh-oh. And I said, well, I'm moving. And, and so we, our house is, has a split plan, and so she stayed in our room, and I moved to the other side of the house, and she has been sick all week long. And it was super hard getting on a plane Friday to fly up here, but she was doing so much better. And I have a daughter um, that lives three blocks from us that I knew would take good care of her, and another daughter that lives about 30 minutes who's actually a nurse, and I knew they were going to take good care of their mom, but uh, I, I, I told the guys that, and they've been praying for her, and so I just want you to know, she texted me this morning, she said, I slept so good, my fever's gone, I feel 100% better, so thank you guys for, for praying for her, so that, that really means, that means a lot, uh, it means a lot. So um, Moses, Moses provided water from rock, you remember that, he hit the rock, bad idea, cost him a trip into the promised land. But when the people were thirsty with Joshua, Joshua said, where's your shovel? Go dig your own wells. What's your problem? Okay, so very, very different, very, very different than Moses. And I would just say, be you. And, and whoever, comes, whoever comes after Craig, okay, is, is not going to be Craig. Woo-hoo, you guys got it, all right? And don't expect him to be. Let, let him be whoever, Bob or Bill or Johnny or Tim or I don't know. But, but, but let him be him and, 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 and you be you, okay? You be you. That's what God is calling us to be. Lead, lead, but be you. And, and he's calling us to lead these people. You, you have a group of people to lead. I have a group of people to lead. Sometimes you don't get to choose who to lead because God has already chosen them for you, okay? Uh, this is the group of people in part that God has chosen me to lead, all right? Now, I got to pick my wife. Well, actually, she got to pick me because she's the one that chased me, of course. Okay, she, she, she came after me. <laughs> oh, I wish I could tell you more about that story. But anyway, um, we got married. We had two daughters. We sent them away to college to get an education and husbands, and they did exactly what we wanted. They came back with husbands with good jobs. Woo! It was great. So we, had, we now have four grandkids. Two of them were born into our family, and two of them were brought into our family through foster care and adoption, and we, we love each other. But people say, oh, I love that picture. It's one of those, you, you guys doing those crazy pictures. No, that's us. 
I mean, that's, that's literally the way we take pictures. We are crazy, all right? So this is the group of people that I am primarily called to lead. And there are people in your life that you have to lead. They are these people. And God is saying to Joshua, these are the people I want you to lead. I put you in a place with the right people. I love what Scripture tells us. It tells us that God created each and every person, and he put them. God decided exactly, okay, when and where they must live. Guess what? For this time of transition in Mount Zion, God has you right here. He has you to be a part of the next steps, of the next things that are going to happen in this church. You're at this place, so be involved in leading this place, loving this place, serving this place. First thing, lead these people. Next thing that we find is found in the, in the second time that he says this to Joshua, basically the same thing, or at least sounds kind of like the same thing. Be strong and very, everybody say very, all right? Be strong and very courageous. Now, it's interesting that, that this word is not in the other, the other times the, that, that God says this to Joshua. This is the only time. So it makes me think, hmm, I want to... I wonder why he stuck this in here. I wonder why he had to add, be very courageous at this point of the conversation. Well, well, here's what it is. Because he's calling us to be courageous to live this way. Live what way? Live what way? Well, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law. Ah, ah. So living according to God's word requires having a lot of courage. Doing what God says in here, following it, means that you've got to be courageous. You've got to be bold. And I think we would all agree that there are a lot of churches that are not following this anymore. In fact, there are churches that I go to a lot of times that they're no more than a cold play and a TED talk. They've forgotten about this. That's why it takes very courageous people to stand on God's word and to stay true to it. Moses gave you this word, do not turn to the right or to the left, that you may be successful. Everybody say successful. Successful wherever you go. And that means really blessed of God. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Hmm, That's an interesting term. Keep it always on your lips and meditate on it day and night. What exactly does it mean, keep this on your lips? Well, for me, I I think that, 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 that it means what you say is filtered through what he said. So that as you have conversations that, 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 that as things come out of your mouth, they go through God's word and they're edited, they're changed, they're softened, they're strengthened as a result of what God has said. All right? Think of it this way. Our words are to be influenced by the word. The word. Uh, when you talk, great question. When you talk, do you hear God? Do you hear his compassion, his kindness? His joy, his faithfulness, his goodness, his mercy? Is, is, that, is that what is in the accent of your voice as you communicate, as you communicate with people? So let's, let's, I'm going to give you three clues, and I'm going to see if you can tell where this person might be from. If somebody said to you, I'm fixing to go to the store, or somebody said to you, y'all come back, or if somebody said to you, roll, tide, roll, Where would they be from? Alabama. No doubt. No doubt. So let me ask you something. When you talk to people, is there there any doubt in their minds where you've been from? Where you've come from? Have you come from here? You talk from here to your spouse, to your kids, to your friends, to your neighbors, to your coworkers? And when you talk, does it sound like, does it sound like God? The pastor back at our church says, you are better with people when you've been with Jesus. Because God does something in your life and he creates a vocabulary that's around, that's around his vocabulary. Keep this book of the law always on your lips and meditate. on. Everybody say meditate. Um, that's not what meditate is. That's not what scripture is talking about. That's not what it means. Now, meditate, the word for meditate is hagal, hagal. And it means to mutter or to speak or self-talk or repeating. <laughs> you, you, you've seen people like this. I have been like this where I've been wandering around the house. And my wife said, what are you talking about? Nothing. And I was really meditating on something she said. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's what it means. And, and, and the truth is, if you can worry, good news, you can meditate. If you can ruminate on something that's bad, you can celebrate and contemplate something that's good. And that's really what meditate is. That's, it, it, it's, it's focusing on God's word and it's allowing it to go over and over. A noble and godlike character is not a thing of favor or chance but it is a natural result of continued effort in right thinking, the effect of long-cherished association with God-like thoughts. You don't become an awesome Christian without thinking about how awesome your God is. But as you do that, that creates in you the person that he wants you to be. And do this day and night. Nothing that does, doesn't occur daily will ever dominate your life. That's why this needs to be take up your cross daily, worship daily, meditate daily, seek his word daily, be strong and courageous, live this way. And then the last thing, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. Why, why did he put that in there? Because that's what stalls us out. That's what stops us from doing what God wants us to do. When we're scared, when we're afraid, when we're frustrated, when we're discouraged, what God has called us to do, it stalls out. It stalls out. So the last thing is last until you pass. <laughs> last until you pass. There's something that God has for you alone to do, but you never have to do it alone. God was calling Joshua to do something that only Joshua could do, but he was telling him, you won't have to do it alone. I will be with you. I'm going to take care of you. I will be, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. My favorite passage of scripture is Hebrews 12. Really kind of life verses that I've connected with, partly in because, because I'm a runner, and I love this passage. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let's throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let's run. Everybody say run. Run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. And let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful man so that you do not grow weary and you do not lose heart. You are not afraid and you are not discouraged because if those things happen, the race is over. The race is over. So last until... You pass. That's Joshua's legacy lesson. Let me, let me just say this. So I'm a triathlete, so I, I, I definitely run, but I also swim and I also ride. I also cycle. And whenever you're doing a triathlon, it's important that you swim as fast as you can. It's always important that you run as fast. It's always important that you ride as fast as you can. But it's also important between swimming and biking and running, that you get the transitions right. So when I come out of the water and I'm running up to get on my bike, I already have, I've already set out my shoes, I already have my helmet, I have everything ready so that just as soon as I come out of the water, I can get into it as smoothly as I can to get onto the next spot. And as soon as I come off the bike, I drop my cycling shoes, I put on my running shoes, I take off my helmet, and I take off, and I try to do that as fast and as smooth and as safe as I possibly can. Mount Zion, you have had 36 years with Pastor Craig where it's been a big and a good and an awesome run. And now you're in a transition. Could be one week. Could be a month. Could be a couple months. I don't know. Harley doesn't know. The council doesn't know. Guess who does? God. When I woke up this morning, I was thinking about you guys and thinking about this opportunity. And what a, what a thank you so much, uh, Steve, for inviting me and um, everybody that's been a part. I, I, I've fallen in love with Mount Zion. I have some new wonderful friends. But I woke up this morning thinking about you guys because I've been, I've been the Craig I've been the guy, I was at a church for 22 years when I, when I moved on to where I am right now. And I remember leaving. I've been the guy who's left, but I've also been the guy who's, who's arrived. I know, what, I know what both of these feel like. And I also know what this transition should look like. And so I want to just give you three things this morning, just to encourage you. This is just, just from the heart. During this transition, pray. 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 
Second thing, during this transition, stay, stay, stay. It may be taking time. It may, you may go through a couple candidates. I, I don't know exactly how the process works here, but don't go anywhere. Please don't do that. Uh, allow this to be an opportunity for you, and this is, the, this is the third thing, to obey, obey, obey. And that means growing closer to God yourself. You, you had a shepherd named Craig who, who loved you and still loves you, and you loved him and still love him. Fine. No problem. But he is not your only source of growth. He is not the only person that should help you get closer to God. Guess who is the number one person? You are. So obey God. Obey God. Get to know him more. Use this as a transition time to to seek him like you've never sought him before. You guys are awesome. Thanks for letting me be here today. I want to pray for you. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for what you're doing here at Mount Zion. You haven't, you haven't left. You haven't forsaken. You've promised to be here through all of it. And even though it may not look exactly what they thought it was going to look like, it's just an opportunity again for you to shine and for you to show up and for you to display the fact that you're in control. But don't let them be afraid. Don't let them be discouraged. Don't don't let them be fearful. Don't let them lose heart. Don't let them give up. We ask that you would just be with them, that you would bless them. And whoever this next person is, as you're getting them ready and getting Mount Zion ready, I pray that this, this next season would be even bigger than the season before, that you would bless it, you would honor it, that people would come to know Christ, that families and lives and futures would be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we sing this last song, I invite you to stand and sing with us. Maybe the Lord's laying on your heart to do just that, to pray, to pray, to pray. This altar is open and available for you. You can come pray alone. If you need someone to pray with you, just come forward, lift your hand. I'm sure there's someone in this congregation, a Stephen minister, another brother or sister in the faith who would welcome the opportunity to come pray alongside you. So let's worship our Lord together before we dismiss here this morning.
Jesus. This is a house of miracles. And we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. And we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. I still believe you're speaking. God, I believe you're working. All things are good. And I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're speaking. I still believe you're working. All things for God. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe you're working. All things for God. Come alive in the name. Jesus, come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. And we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We sing. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. And we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Yes, everything to the feet of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. God, we lay everything at your feet here today. Go with us, be with us, instill in us a spirit of courage and of faith. Send us out. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week.